so when it comes to playing lead guitar, I always recommend that everyone learns um, the modes. There's a ton of theory and knowledge you can get from just learning these, and pretty much all my theory just comes from learning the modes. And there's a lot you can do with them, and the more you kind of stick with it, the more you kind of see how they all work and how they link up and how to apply it, um, and how to apply it to other instruments. Sometimes when I sit on a piano and start messing around, um, I feel like I can get my ideas out quicker because of the knowledge I've learned from playing guitar and the modes and the theory behind that. Um, so it, it can take you quite a long way. You know, some people might be scared to use um, too much theory and try and rely on that and try and rely on their, using their ear, which um, I do agree with as well, but there are some people that are just naturally really gifted um, and have a good musical ear. And uh, I actually would consider myself to have quite a good ear for music, but some people if you think of it like a vocalist, some vocalists are you know, just tone deaf and when you are tone deaf you don't know that you're tone deaf. So if everyone just learns these scales it sort of covers everyone because there are a lot of famous guitarists that you hear that are, obviously haven't learnt their theory or the scales properly and rely on their ear but because they haven't got a very developed um, ear or you know, a good ear for music you can always hear like notes or vibrato that's just wrong and just shouldn't be there. There are obviously great guitar players that don't know any theory either. I, I think I remember Dynelag saying he wasn't too clued up, um, but he falls into the category of people that just are naturally really musical and have a good ear for it. So um, just learning the modes, uh, you don't always have to rely on them, but uh, like I said, it's, sort of, it's just great for everyone to just learn them and it will take you a long way with your music if you, uh, if you do learn so them. So if you've uh, ever had guitar lessons like I did and you get shown the modes, um, for me, it just took me ages to actually to really absorb what they were and to sort of learn how to use them. For for ages, I just used it as kind of like a um, just like a practice routine. I just go up one, down the next, until I got back to the octave. Another thing I would say and recommend with learning new scales: always start as low down as possible, uh, not with an open string, so never in an E. So I always just learn them in F because it's the widest. Um, spacing and frets which is good for you know stretching your fingers out and at the same time uh, it means you can go from the lowest note to the high note and try and work all the way up the fretboard and just learning with open notes can just get a bit confusing or annoying. So like I say it took me a long time to sort of figure out what the modes actually were or how to use them and how to apply them. Over the years of me playing guitar and teaching guitarists um, I think I figured out just one of the best ways to explain it uh, quite easily. So basically the most uh, common scale in the world is the major scale, or at least Western music. So that's the major scale. Uh, when it comes to the modes, that one's called Ionian, which is the main mode. So if, you, if we just refer to it as the major scale for now, it's just seven notes. So And that's the octave there, an F. So basically, um, a good way to think about the modes is think about it in relation to playing with a band or playing with a bass player. So if the bass player is hammering out this kind of note, and we're in F major, you can play all these seven notes. Because the bass uh, has got that in your head and you're, you're hearing that and associating this F note as the root note, that's what gives it that sound. Now if I take the third note in the scale and the same group of notes in the same order, but I um, kind of get this note in your head and you're hearing that as the root note and I start playing a riff like this. So it's just the same notes that I'm playing, but because I'm starting on this one, it instantly gives it a different sound, which is more of like a dark, kind of metal sounding uh, uh, vibe to it. So basically, what modes are, are scales within a scale. So I'm just using the same bunch of notes, but because I've started on the third note, and I'm hammering out this note, and you know, imagine that the bass player is sort of just playing that. You can play all the notes of the major scale, which is that really happy sounding scale. But if the bass player is playing this, no matter what notes you play, you're still in um, what is now uh, A Phrygian, which is the third or the third mode within the major scale, um, which is a, a scale in its own right. But basically, what the modes are are scales within a scale. When people refer to the modes, they mean usually referring to the major scale, the most common scale in in the world, or like I say, Western music. There are two different ways of learning them. There's like one sort of shape where you can do like. 
um, which more of the jazz players learn, which is very good when you try not to think like a guitarist and just trying to think musically, but the guitarists, uh, someone came up with the three note per string modes, so you basically got three notes on every string. And that's the first shape, Ionian. Annoyingly, it doesn't end on an F, which, and it doesn't really have an even amount of notes, so when you're playing it to a metronome, by the time you get up and back, you're not really going to be on the one of the beat anymore, but don't worry about that kind of stuff. So basically you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back of the octave, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back of the octave again, and then just extra notes on the E string. Just as a guitarist, it's just easy to learn these as just shapes when you're starting off. So really just think of it as just learning a shape when you're just beginning. And then if you've already learned that stuff, what I'm talking about now is just sort of how to apply them or how to really understand what the modes are, how they each have their own different sound. So, like I say, three note per string, and there are just different scales within a scale. So if you start on the first note, that's Ionian. On the second note of the scale, same grouping of notes, this is Dorian. Then we're in A, this is Phrygian. Then we're in uh, B flat, Lydian. Then we've got uh, C mix, Lydian. When you get to D, this is like the minor scale, so this is the, the minor equivalent of the major scale, the most common minor scale in the world. And we've got Locrian. And we're back the F of the octave, and that's all the seven positions and seven different shapes. So the minor scale is the most commonly used minor sound minor scale in the world. It's got more sort of sad kind of tone to it. You know, a lot of our songs we have uh, stuff in you know E minor, and it's usually in E Aeolian, which that one is, or E Phrygian, which is a slightly darker sound. So if I talk about how to apply this in terms of riffs and stuff, just learning modes uh, on the low two strings is really helpful as a guitarist when you're writing riffs. It just instantly makes life so much easier, and you don't start putting in weird notes that don't really make sense. And so if you're a metal guitarist and you want to write riffs and stuff. Just learning the, the notes on the low two strings is just really easy. Or learning uh, the scale, sorry, the modes on the low two strings. So if you've got um, E minor, which is doesn't relate to what we were just doing in F a second ago, um, this was the sort of sounding riff you've got. That's the most sort of basic Iron Maiden-y sounding thing. The difference uh, between E Aeolian, which is the most common uh, minor scale, and E Phrygian, which is the other most common minor scale, it's just one note different. So you've got. Uh, it's just the second note of the scale that's different. So you've either got. at the start of the scale or. and that's just got more of a darker sound to it. So, like I say, if you learn um, E Aeolian and E Phrygian, the most common two sort of minor scales, um, especially in heavy music just on the low two strings, it's really helpful for when you want to write riffs, so you just need to know. So I know I can write any, uh, use any of those notes uh, when I want to write a riff. And E Phrygian, like I say, it's just the second note that's different. So a really good thing that you could be doing is um, if you can record yourself or get your hands on some backing tracks, some really basic backing tracks. Um, and like I said earlier, uh, ideally just a bass or something, just a root note playing instead of getting into chords and you know changing chords and all that stuff. So you've just got a bass just playing sort of to a drum beat. Get in the habit of learning all the different mode shapes in one spot. You'll be changing key every time you play a different uh, mode over that same root note but it'll um, enable you to really hear the differences in each scale. So if you start thinking about that root note and then start playing, just pick one at random. So let's say um, Phrygian again. Um, and then, you know, pick another one. Let's say Lydian.
sorts of associations you can make with you know the different modes. Uh, Phrygian's got like a very dark, the most dark and sort of sinister sounding one. Aeolian, like I say, is the most sort of basic minor one. It can be more sort of sad sounding than dark and sinister. Lydian's a, a major one, but it's a little bit, uh, I don't know, mysterious sounding or something, so it's... Uh, Dorian's a, a minor scale, but it's a little sort of less dark, less sad, and a little bit more open sounding. Also, the most easy way to determine if a scale is major or minor is just to see what, how far away the third note is. So if you've got a scale that goes, the third note is only three frets away, that's a minor third, so you know it's a minor scale. If it's four frets away, you know it's a major one. And that's just when it comes to these modes. Uh, another thing to remember is all the different types of uh, other scales that are all the slightly more interesting or eastern sounding ones. Uh, they also have their own modes, so you've got a scale like uh, the harmonic minor. You know, within that one you've got a really common mode of the harmonic minor scale, which is called Phrygian dominant. Which is one of the most commonly used uh, modes within heavy music as well, so... consider especially if you're a beginner and you've never really learned all the notes on every string of the fretboard all the way up which not many people do when they're starting off is it can be confusing to think that there's all these different scales all in such close proximity to each other all these different shapes should I say uh, all out the fretboard and it's only just the same seven notes but it is just seven notes it's just that's how the guitars maps out how it's all tuned and everything um, there are that many of the same note all in close proximity, so I don't need to worry about that. So basically, it's just seven notes, and they just repeat. And the main way to look at it, like I say, is scales within a scale, and they all have their own names. So you've got Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, and then you're back at Ionian, which is another word for the major scale. So that's a good starting point to get you thinking about how they work and how they're all sort of related and just a, a good first look at the modes. If you want any further um, advanced sort of theory and, and lessons, uh, I do online Skype lessons at uh, middle-tone.com.